Hey, what's up, Lee Ron here. Today we're gonna learn how to paint a monochrome black and white cityscape in a relatively accurate and realistic manner. This is based on an old live stream I did uh, where I show you the process. And I think it's very useful because removing the colors just makes it easier to perceive everything else and to nail that realistic impression. So without further ado, let's get to it. So I'm gonna get started. Only color I'm using is neutral tint. Um, just such a great color for these kinds of things. And you could do wet and wet. You could pre-wet the paper. Um, this is such a simple wash, honestly. Um, I don't need to. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do this kind of uh, wet on dry, so to speak. So this is our lit side. And because this is cold press paper and I'm used to it, it's gonna be much, much easier because the hot press paper, again, I'm still learning how to actually control what's happening. And it's really, really tough. Um, so we're gonna radiate out from that corner uh, and as we move along we're gonna just add a bit more paint there's a bit of leftover blue um, on the and I'm not gonna worry too much about highlights I'm actually gonna cover everything except for the markings on the road reason being um, I'd much rather focus on having a good wash um, and then I can add these markings on later uh, once the paper dries, we're going to use plenty of opaque paint to get that. Um, we're going to use designer's wash, which John sent me. Thank you so much. By the way, John, I'm happy to have you here. I just got the package. Thank you so much. I just now received it. Um, no, I am going to lighten up these people. And I'm, I was going to message you. I just It was like literally five minutes before the live stream began. I was going to message you. Let's see how wet this is. Okay, so this is still wet. So I'd like to help it spread out a bit more even. We'll do this kind of a thing. We're gonna flip it around, move it around just a bit uh, to help maybe, and maybe I can just go back like this and kind of help it uh, change a bit of directions. Um, I'm putting a bit of cleaner water on the figures just to make sure I don't go too dark there. That's something I'll do sometimes. And then it is back to uh, the rest of the scene. Now I know it looks quite strong, don't worry. Uh, this is still gonna dry quite light. The one thing I am concerned with is those very small, I guess, highlights on the road. So wherever I see those, I will make sure to leave them. That's one here, and then we have another one here. And you see this brush does allow uh, some nice control if needed, uh, even though it's quite a big brush. And that's pretty much it, first wash. I'm gonna let it dry. One, one thing you can do is darken the foreground. Because when I look at it, it is a little stronger. You wanna make sure it doesn't stay super duper light actually. So we're gonna do this without overworking, hopefully anything. And I'll think about it. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll go one more touch like that. Something like this should work quite well. Uh, and then we're gonna let it dry for a few seconds naturally without touching it. Um, so let's see what you are saying. One more thing I would do actually, it's a good thing. Uh, here, here as well. Just a bit so that it doesn't feel like this white area divides it into two, because it doesn't. This is still, uh, you know, still a little, it just gets a little darker the closer it is to us. Just a little, uh, it's a small difference. Uh, we're going to switch over now to the buildings and I'm going to start from right to left actually and maybe we'll do this. I don't like to rotate the paper too much. I don't like to disorient you but we will do it this time. So um, we'll rotate it like this because I'm going to work from right to left and I just want to make sure some flow is maintained. Switching to my large goat brush by Levinson brushes. And we'll start right to left because I want to start um, actually right to left and top to bottom. So kind of at an angle because I want to get started with those light buildings. And look at how, again, the buildings on the right are indeed lighter. Now, I'm going to try and paint this entire wash in one go. I'm going to need a lot more water than this. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to paint this entire thing in one go, hopefully. And um, take care of some of the nuances in one go. We'll see where that takes us. I'm going to try and focus a lot, so maybe I'll shut up for a, for a while while I do the lines. So we're starting right to left and I want 
I want when you're doing this to almost feel like the paint is almost too pale. Now, if it looks too pale, you're actually in a good spot because you can always come back with some more pigment like this and kind of make it a little stronger, okay? So we're, we'll work our way through those buildings and, and one thing to have in mind is don't obsess over the shapes. Very common thing, common theme among many people uh, is to obsess over the edges of the shape and to think they look terrible or they, they're not as accurate as they could be. But if you, again, retouch it, kind of like the video we did on uh, overwork, you're gonna mess it up and you don't want that. You're just gonna get an uneven transition uh, a lot of bad things, a lot of bad things will happen. <laughs> Sounds super dramatic. Not a lot of bad things will happen to you, but it's not going to be uh, as even or nice as you want. Now, here's something. I'm going to rotate it back now, I think. I'm going to do this. I'm going to go over the edge of these buildings. And now I'm starting to strengthen it quite a bit, as you can tell. And I'm not concerned with this dark shape touching the lighter shape. In fact, that's preferable for me. That's actually better because then I get some kind of a connection between the two, right? And then I have a bit of a tree here. So I think I'll, I'll actually put it this time wet and wet and keep it fairly light and in the background. But we have a wash to continue. And I'm going to be uh, ruthless with how I go over uh, everything here. I'm, I'm just going to cover up the shapes. Now, this top building is from the back. It's a little farther from us. So again, I'm going a little lighter, just like here in my previous attempt. Uh, and we will continue and I'm prioritizing a lot of the time here speed over accuracy like if I see a really nice highlight I can decide to leave it like here but really don't try too hard because you may end up with uh, an uneven wash especially if you're not as experienced and, and some experience is in seeing so like I know where to paint because I see the shapes a little more accurately. Some of the experience comes from there. So if you're not used to seeing, interpreting quickly, uh, that's another kind of a thing where uh, you may want to, and let me darken this a little more. Using very thick paint here. There's another dark building here like that. Goes down like this. Let's get, let's get some nuances here. Uh, I really like the top here being a little like that. We'll bring out some specific details later on. Uh, but now we have to take care of the bottom section and make sure that we paint around uh, properly. There's an awning here. I'm going to keep that. And now it's pretty much too late to revisit anything that's up top. So we're not going to do any of that. It's so much easier for me to do this uh, with um, hot press paper. I'm so used to it. I'm going to switch to a smaller, smaller brush, but it's so much easier for me to work like that because I'm so used to uh, the way this paper handles, you know, and I'm keeping it as wet as I can while while still getting the right value. That's kind of the tricky part where you have to compromise sometimes. There we go. Um, and look at what we can do here. We can already connect what we see if it works. I'm going to open up the reference photo. I need it. Uh, I need to see it. Uh, big. Thought I could get away with small, but it's going to open. There we go. I just really need to see the shapes here. Okay, yeah, that's good. So that wraps around this car and then we'll continue, as I said, with this street lamp, because why not get a, an, a in, in fact, let's do this. Let me see how wet. Yeah, we can still do that. So look at what I'm doing here. I'm just going to go for it like that. I'm using very thick paint. That way I can get this down now and later just kind of help it. I'm not going to need to do too much. Now I am still keeping some flow. I don't want this just to be super stale. Uh, there we go, like this. There's a bit of a sidewalk here, like that. I know this is 
very frequently where people kind of lose the plot. Uh, so you have to be careful and see that you're indeed painting the shape you need to paint. For example, I think I lost a window for the car here, but I'll bring it back. Uh, and then the bottom of the car, we'll get that. And let's finish this thing here. And here I can leave some kind of highlights in the corner, but it's not as important. And now while I'm here, I can actually connect it to the car. So let's see what we're doing here. I'm going to connect this to the darkest part on the car. The more we make these connections, the more we kind of save up on tasks that we'll have to do later on, honestly. But I'm going to go a little lighter on the side of the car. Of course, it's not as dark. So something like that. And we'll get back the highlights later, so don't worry about those. And then let's get some more water near the bottom. Let's get some thick paint for the tires. And we'll try a bit of white here as well, just darker. Let's go for everything here. Let's just complete the car. Um, so I'm just going to go back with some a moist brush like that and then get rid of some of these highlights in the middle. Something like this. And quickly, before the bottom dries, I have to continue this. There's nothing really fancy about painting this way. It's actually all about being careful. Um, I really enjoy it, but sometimes it doesn't make for uh, necessarily too interesting demos. Though I know people say they enjoy these, so no. Uh, we'll con connect Cast Shadow right now. We're going to just continue it. Even though we have the bicycle and the guy there, we're just going to kind of continue it here. Imagine it behind the bike. And we have this kind of a dark thing. And it just kind of casts here. Uh, and it should start from here, I'm sure. That pretty much works. We can actually connect the shadow on the sidewalk here if we want to but that's that's enough i think um so there's this front light of the car um the windshield is quite light but it's not white so i'm just gonna you know what no I should probably leave it like that because i did go darker on the front part where the hood is there we go. I'm gonna leave it like that for just a few more moments and we'll, we'll see. Sometimes I'm trying to chew more, to bite more than I can chew. Uh, but yeah. Now on to the next car. This is actually one of my favorites from the big painting as well. Just because it looks so darn cool. Especially the front. Like this. Um, and then here. Okay, so I'm starting with a light wash. And I'm going to gradually go dark, but I just want to make sure I leave the correct highlights. And I'm going to take a break in a few moments and kind of address any questions. But for now, I have to keep going. And then I really like doing this kind of thing for the front detail. You see, and it reads really nicely. There is a bit of a thing here like that. This should be even darker, I think. Shadow should continue all the way to the other car and kind of create a... There we go. Now like this, there's another car there. Oops, move the camera. Sorry about that. Now let me make sure you can see everything because I'm like... There we go. Um, so yeah, the car at the back, I'm going to keep that one lighter than it actually is. Um, so this goes here. And then this is the body of the car. I'm kind of guesstimating because now it's a bit hard to follow. And again, paint bigger if you want to see more of the small details. I'm, I love this small format. It's like a quick win and honestly, it's not easy to paint big. So especially not during the live stream. So I'm just making my uh, life a little easier. Uh, a bit of a shadow there. And then this actually connects to an interesting 
thing here where they do the scaffolding and construction so that looks nice uh, so we're gonna get the car here at the front uh, this is gonna be a fun one so I'm gonna paint around that uh, and again the larger you go the more more of an ability you have to be more granular with the details like right now I'm, I'm not struggling but I really have to watch out um, to, to get the shape right you know and if you work larger it's just a little bit easier but the the other you know the other side of it is the challenge of actually uh, painting so there we go and then the front and it's it cuts gets cut by the edge and I'm gonna do some edge work here so let's blend this just a bit um, and same here and then come back with some dark paint I know it's a very small detail you probably don't see too much of it from afar but it's gonna make a big difference and the bottom should be dark too so like that and then the windows here could be darker as well um, and then the mirror could be darker and we'll add some highlights for the door handles that's a very common thing door handles of cars see how to highlight here you can see it in the reference photo um, so yeah, that's a very common occurrence. And what we are left with almost is the people. The, the one thing we can get rid of, quote unquote, here is this car in the background. And then we will be left with the people and the people only. Um, see, there's a, the, the edge of the sidewalk here. I want to edit, even though it's barely visible like that. Um, but yeah, now I'm, I'm pretty much, I feel like I'm back to my routine, pretty much. Not 100%, but pretty much. Now imagine, like, if I'm having a, even a slightly hard time here with some details, imagine how hard it would be if we worked in color. Just one, one thing to kind of have in mind, right? This is why I'm a big fan of black and white, especially for demos where you have to talk and it's a little harder to concentrate, so, you know. Let's do this here and again we're pretty much done what else so i'd like to straighten out that car and i know exactly how the front car just one small move and we'll we should be okay so this should go here a bit confusing but now it rotated it a bit the mirror of course should have some value on it so there we go like that uh there's actually a shadow cast by it and a bit of details here within the shadow so we can do that if we're already working on it but i think we'll, we'll for now that's what we'll do uh, so i'm gonna get started on the figures here now the figures are actually quite simple so let me show you should i switch to let's switch to a smaller brush this is a yet again slightly smaller brush are you painting an all natural light yeah this time it's all natural light yep uh, as it gets um Later, I have to turn on the lights and then they're a little yellow. They're not the most neutral because I prefer yellow lights, um, but still good. Um, so, hair is dark and I can actually do both figures uh, simultaneously, I think, if I work hard. So let's try, let's try that. So the hair is going to be a little dark, but look at what happens here. As we get to the faces, it goes a little lighter. And that's exactly the effect I'm going to be after. Now, she does have these sunglasses. And then I'm going to come back with the, some lighter paint. And I'm, I'm just going to help this paint move down. It's just going to move down with the new paint. And look at what I'm doing. I'm leaving some of the uh, room for the highlights, of course. There's this nice little shadow here. And this corner is actually a little dark. And I'm just going to move with... Now, if, if I had done this... The shirt is a little dark, actually. If I had done this same thing in my with my hot press paper, I'll get an uneven result. I'm so not used to how it handles yet. So it's funny. Uh, and then her dress, same thing, kind of darker. But before it dries, let me... Come back with some of the lighter paint once again over everything don't worry we're still the very initial stages over uh her arm his arm because it's lighter his arm here as well can we get a thumb here kind of okay good 
<laughs> here as well. Continuing with some darker for the, and can you see this? Yeah, good. Uh, for uh, the dress, it is darker. And his jeans, I'm gonna continue this. His jeans go a little lighter, but not too much. Now I did trace this one because I already drew it that I wanted to get something fast, but which is why it's super, it's as accurate as it can be, right? Uh, feel free to draw it yourself if you prefer to do that. And we'll continue with the shadow. This, the arm. And at this point, I can connect it, just one second, with the shadow of the curb or the you know sidewalk, whatever that is. Make it a little darker. And make this, while we're at it, let's make this a little. My lines are super wobbly today. <laughs> I don't know what's, what the deal is. Now her shoes and his shoes are darker. His shoes too, right? Just ever so slightly. Kind of like this. There we go. Now over to the other guy on the bike. So let's get it. Um, head. And I'm going to keep, I really like the contrast, the, where the face is much darker than the building in the background. So that works in our favor. Now the shirt is white. So it's going to be fairly light, even though it's against the light. Since the light comes from the, from the right back. So we're going to switch over to a bit of a lighter value here. And take care of the edges. So here's what I see due to the back's muscles. There's a bit of a soft edge around here. In the way the back is structured. So you want to make sure you don't miss that. And while it's still a little wet, put the arms in. Again, we don't have any room for significant anatomical details or anything like that. We, we don't have room or time for that. We just put in the, but mostly room in the painting, right? We just put the bare minimum necessary to convey. And again, it's against the light, so you don't see much, which is a huge advantage in these scenes. You just follow the shapes and you'll be good. Now, let me switch over to a bit of a, no, you know what, I'm gonna stay with a small brush. I just need more water and paint. Because now I'm, I am getting into some, let's say more tricky details. Um, should I go darker on the jeans? Probably, or pants, whatever it is. Actually, it's short. Shorts, whatever. Um, this goes dark. I have to be quite careful at this stage. With my lines. And you just get all the different components of the bike, you know. There's a lot going on, you just put it as if you're, again, treating it as one kind of shape, one wash. And then it connects to uh, the tires, of course. And that's the beauty of these kinds of, you know, um, black and white scenes. They just, they happen fast, right? You, you move your eyes for a second and there is an impression on paper, you know. Uh, so that's the advantage. And then the other one as well, being a little careful with this round shape. But again, no one will notice if it's not as accurate. Now I'm leaving the details inside the tile, the tires for now, because I'm going to use a thinner brush for those. Just make sure you get the, the center here, right? And then we have this kind of a thing here. And the, I don't know what that is, part of the chain or Something, I don't know nothing about bikes, so sorry about that. And then this shadow here, and then the actual person and the other tire. Now, it looks like we may have gone a little too light on the bicycle, but that actually works out, at least the tires, because think about it, they're dynamic, they're in motion. So maybe you don't want to put too much emphasis right on the tire, on the tires themselves. So maybe it's a good idea to keep things a little lighter. Just one thing to have in mind, right? I'm gonna go back to the chat in just one second. I just can, can never talk while doing this kind of a thing. Uh, so here we go. 
a bunch of details there. You know, whatever whatever it takes to create the impression it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, another leg that I kind of missed. I think that works. And then you could even just skip those details, but I'm gonna put them in because I have the pencil line, so they're kind of there in a way. Those details, but let's add those. You know, the, I don't know what you'd call these things here. Using some thin lines with a rigor brush. Actually, have a better rigor brush than this. I just dropped it on the floor. Don't feel like reaching over to it. That one's at 11s and two, and there we go like this. And I think honestly, we're almost done here. Uh, now I do want to justify some of these highlights to add a very thin shadow under them, because I see this and it looks good. You see this in some, um, see, that looks much, much better like cars in the distance. I like that a lot. Something like that. That looks really, really good. Wasn't expecting it to work this well, but well, here we go. Um, and that actually makes me even more want to not touch the building. So if still most people or some people don't want me to, I won't. Uh, but yeah, let me know. I'm still looking at the comments. Um, so yeah, the street light, this is easy. Light drawing, we're using quite, um, quite thick paint. Let me switch over to, um, I'm gonna open up the chat again here on my end. Uh, hello, time pass. Hello, lollipop. Uh, hey, Jackie. Hey, Liz again. Uh, oh, sorry. No, Liz Clyburn. I thought it's a new Liz. Sorry. Uh, Liron, can you use any watercolor like blue or light pink? If I can, of course I can. If you want me to do something specific with them, let me know. Um, uh, let's see here. Do I want to darken? No, let's give it like that. So I'm going to work on that street lamp thing. And this time I can allow myself a bit more time to leave some highlights where I see them. So, and if I can, right? So for example, there's no need to darken where this highlight here, the corner is. There's no need to darken that again. We'll keep that as a highlight. And then the actual light here should be quite, um, quite light because it's transparent. And let me go a little darker. And we'll take it from there. You see I'm rotating the brush kind of with the movement. This is just technique. You just have to do it enough times and you'll uh, feel more confident when you do that. But it is the easiest in terms of like wash and flow, you just draw one singular shape like that. I don't know if that's a thing, but I'm gonna put it. And then we're just gonna connect it to what we've had earlier. Now, even though this was done wet on dry and this was done wet in wet, it will still, this still enhances it. Um, even if, if you're not necessarily noticing, like the, the fact that it's a little more blurry here actually does something, it does play a role in making this street lamp look better. So if you can accomplish these kinds of things in the previous stages where things are still wet, sometimes there's an added benefit to it like here, right? Now I wanna take you back for just one second to the uh, previous attempt I did, because uh, I just wanna show you something. Like here I had much more room to work with the nuances, so I got more details on the sign, and, and I used a lot of opaque paint to bring back that sign that's here. Uh, sorry, you can't see anything that is here. Right, but here I don't need that. Now I get direct sunlight. Let me close the blinds just a bit. So I had much more room to include more details and stuff like that, right? Um, so even though it's not as flowy, it's a little awkward and kind of, you know, all over, um, I really like it. Uh, so let's move towards um, starting to hit those last stages of the painting. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna place like half a window here I actually want these to be not as much of a dry brush and more of a lighter thing. Let's see. Not too light. Um, something like this. That's half a window. And you can also draw on top of it if you need help like with perspectives. So I'm just gonna do this 
and then this. So it should be good. So that's half a window. And then that's kind of another half a window. Another one, another one. Hope that makes sense. Then here I'm gonna put longer ones. And let's try putting some dark kind of paint onto them. I don't wanna, I really don't wanna go too dark here um, because the buildings themselves aren't too dark. So that's something to have in mind. The layer underneath kind of dictates how dark will go. And these are not meant to be like um, an important fixture. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep them blended, as you can see. Um, more than usual, actually. Kind of hint at them and that's it. Um, this is a really nice building. So kind of thinner windows. That's it. So just to give you a few things to maybe think maybe there's something there. Now we do see a street light on the other side. It looks kind of nice, a bit more modern. Let's see if we can get that in. And you see, I'm using a broken line just to make sure I don't do too much there. Nothing catches our attention too strongly. And it goes out like this. And then I'm going to add a highlight later on. Um, let's do this kind of a thing. Just one, like a dark building facade. If I can, I get this here. See, that's a nice way of getting it. So I see a few tiny, tiny highlights here of some signs or something catching the light, something here. Or we had this stop sign or whatever that is. Just small hints indicating, oh, there's something here like a city and it's alive and things happen. On a small kind of architectural details that, that catch the light. See, kind of like this here and there. Now the, the one of the more important parts is this window again. So let me try and just put it in, you see, because it kind of meets the sky in a way. And then a slightly lighter white here. And I think another one, and that's it. So it feels maybe like the window is catching the light. I get a lot of bubbles now, I don't know why. Um, and then one of the most important highlights is right here. And right here. And there are a few here. Um, and then we have some scaffoldings here. They're gonna be nice. And we have this, once again, another awning. And of course, these beautiful diagonal shapes here. Like that. And a bit of this here around that awning. And when we move down here, we have also small, small touches and indications. Uh, there's actually a bit of light on her sunglasses, kind of kept catching the light. Uh, that's pretty much it. Nothing much here, I think. Um, what else? Oh, yeah, the bike. That's a nice little effect here. Don't necessarily want to overdo it, but for where it feels right, you can definitely add some of these. Oh, yeah, here. That's what I missed. I really wanted to get. Every time there's a shift in kind of the direction, this kind of a thing happens. It looks really, really neat. There are a few of these here as well. One here too. Let's get a bit of a thicker white here. And let me take a moment's break and look at it on my screen and see kind of where we're at. You know what I'll do? I know what I'll do. One thing I forgot. That's actually important. I do want to make the guy's shirt a little lighter, actually. So it actually starts from the shoulder. And then... Goes from here. A little better, I think. This actually dips here. Like that. 
Um, let's make this on the shoulder a little stronger. I feel like I still didn't 100% mix the gouache well. And there are a few even smaller details I want to get. Let me fall back on some white gel pen just for that because there are a few very small details. I don't think I'll manage to do even with a smaller brush. Um, so for his arm, see this? Right here. And on her arm, well, I actually successfully left that but like this. Just need a few very small ones. Um, this is good. There's a bit of a highlight here, actually, next to the dark shade. Um, well, that's pretty much it. I don't want to overdo it, so we kind of... I think that works. Done. Okay, so I'm gonna... Uh, remove the tape, don't worry, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna bring it back to the screen. There we go. Nice borders. I think we may have some paint leak here. Let's see. Hope not, but if it, there's actually ways of... Oh yeah, nothing's too serious. Like this little dot here you can barely see. There are ways to remove that. And we're good. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, I really appreciate it. Hope that gave you something, provided you with with maybe a better understanding of how a monochrome approach would work or black and white approach would work. A lot of interesting techniques going on there. You don't have to really, you know, memorize techniques, but a lot of it is just what the moment spurs. And if you're able to be in tune with that the moment of painting. A lot of these things will, will just happen naturally. I want to thank you so much. I want to thank everyone who supports me over on Patreon. I really, really do appreciate it. You're a big, big part of what I'm doing here. And if you want to get credits at the end of the video, be sure to check that out. Link in the description box below. We'll talk to you again real soon. Till next time, take care.